Okay? Well, I'm John McEntee from Incantation. I do guitar and vocals, and yeah, I mean, I do other stuff too, playing a few other bands, but Incantation's been my uh, stable band for the last 30 years, so. I was hooked on the style of extreme music pretty much as a young kid, probably around, ah, I can't remember exactly. I mean, I was like six or seven years old when I first heard Kiss. I seen him on uh, the TV show, and uh, I just thought it was the coolest thing, and I liked the heavy guitars and stuff, and since then, I kind of got... Um, you know, went the normal path of like getting into stuff like uh, ACDC and then, um, you know, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, some of the early like pre, I call it kind of pre-poser stuff like, you know, early Motley Crue and Rat and stuff like that. Like I, just stuff that had heavy guitars in it. And then I started getting into like hearing um, Venom. I picked up um, War with, not War with Satan, it was... Um, Welcome to Hell on picture disc back then, and that was just like the evilest thing I ever heard. And then I started listening to stuff like, well, I heard a lot of stuff on radio. There was a radio station called WMSC in New Jersey, and they would play like everything from like Iron Maiden to, um, you know, Hellhammer, Merciful Fate, uh, Fate's Warning, all this stuff, and I just remember hearing all these like underground bands there and really, really getting turned on by them. I mean, I, I remember, um, you know, hearing Merciful Fate and just not knowing what the hell's going on, you know, and hearing the early Metallica, like the stuff off of Kill 'Em All, and just hearing those, those guitars, you know, crunching and stuff, and just the aggression in the music, and just it just grew from there. It's kind of like a um, steady thing, and then I, I think. Probably the turning point for me musically, though, would be, I think when I heard, like, Slayer's Hell Await, Hell Awaits, and, like, Possess Seven Churches, it was just, like, that was something, like, the next step, you know, even heavier and stuff. And then once I got into tape trading, a little bit later, probably around, I think I started around 87 or something with tape trading, it was all over. Once I started hearing bands like Pap Smear, Master, um you know, early death, like, demos and stuff like that. It was just, like, I knew that my future was in creating, you know, the most brutal stuff possible. I mean, it's, it's always been kind of my thing. I just like music. I, I just liked really extreme music. I like guitar-oriented music. And, um, yeah, that's, um, you know, then I'm still doing it. What, that's almost 35 years <laughs> from when I heard it, so it's, it's pretty crazy, but for me it wasn't a trend. Well, yeah, I'm, well, I'm blown away that people still like this kind of music. Um, I mean, when I was starting Incantation back in 1989, I never, never thought it would last this long. I mean, pretty much um, what we start, we started 80, 89, I thought maybe by 95, it would just all be done, you know, no one would care about this kind of stuff anymore, and music would just move on, and in some ways it did, I guess, but it, instead, really, it just kind of like, kept kind of mutating a little bit with the times and stuff, but it's kind of interesting because now, 30 years after we started, our style of death metal is more popular, maybe more popular than when it first happened. Because when it first happened, people had no clue to what the hell we were doing. And even in the death metal world, it was like, it was pretty over the top, um, you know. So now it's like, it's almost become more accepted or people kind of understand it. I don't want to sound like rock star and egotistical, but... You know, maybe we were just a little bit ahead of the time without even knowing it. I mean, we didn't think we were, but looking back on it, it's like we just thought that we were playing a style of death metal that everybody hated, which we were fine with. We didn't care because we are doing it because we love it. It's not because we're trying to uh, win a talent contest or winning a popularity contest or any bullshit like that. We were just doing it because we were into it. And um, But it's nice to know that people still give a crap about it these days. And there are, there's a lot of great, um, great new bands out there that are, you know, doing good, 
feeling full death metal. I, I say feeling full because I prefer uh, death metal to have some sort of um, you know meaning behind it, not just not just um, not just the brutality, not just the uh, speed and the technicality. I think it needs to have. It sounds it's a cheesy word, but it has to have like a passion behind it. It has to it has to have it has to be heartfelt when playing it, not just um, not just like oh I could just write this brutal stuff or just these cool riffs. You want to feel the riffs in your soul when you hear. It. You want to know when you're watching a band play that these riffs mean everything to them. It's not just like well I could play this and who cares, you know. A lot a lot of bands I see to you know they do it seems like they're almost just dialing it in and i want to see bands that aren't dialing it in i want to see bands that are that it means something to because if, if you're dialing it in i'd rather you just leave the scene anyway you know i want to see people that are passionate even if i don't like the stuff you're doing as long as you know it's passionate i could have a lot of respect for you well there's numerous things i mean one thing that i've noticed is that the uh, death metal fans are way more alike than they are different wherever we go I mean it's an amazing thing for us to be able to travel to anywhere in the world and we feel like we have um, friends there automatically and just you know it's a, it's a great thing it's like you you go to a place where there's a, a diff, say a different culture to some extent but at the same time you'll feel so welcome there because of music and because people you know respect the music that you play that it's um, just just a great it's a great feeling t to feel that we have friends in almost every country in the world just for the music that we play and that they could relate to it and it means something too so I mean, it's something that's very I'm very flattered about you know it's something that's it's very um, it's an honor you know to be in the position that I'm in with with that get that's getting off topic a little bit but um, I mean the scene throughout the years it just changes there's just different things that get popular I mean you know for a while you know it was more like uh, you know new metal stuff or a lot of symphonic stuff gets really popular and stuff like that and I think um, with death metal it got to a point at a certain point where people were searching so hard to be the most brutal and also trying to be the most technical and to me it stripped out some of the soul of the music so I'm happy that it's kind of uh, come back to what I consider kind of more meat and potatoes of, of the style because I, I believe that the only limit anybody has um, you know, coming up with stuff or writing music is their own imagination and their own mind. A lot of people, you know, to say, oh, everything's already been done and, um, you know, all that bullshit. But, you know, listen to, uh, I mean, listen to a band like Immolation. You know, they're, you know, every time they put on an album, it's like they're coming up with these new ideas. So obviously, those guys have a lot of. A lot to express and a lot of originality in what they do. It's and you would think that uh, a band like that, it's been playing for so long, wouldn't. But they, you know, they still always go above and beyond. And and you know, I think bands that act like they they have to change or add stuff to the music to make it different, either don't have a good imagination or maybe they just you know they maybe just want to do something else you know and they're using that as an excuse because I I never had a problem like I never had a dry spell where I'm just like you know I don't know what to write I just I get on a guitar go to practice and the songs just fall out a lot of times you know because it's just just part of who you are as a person and not it's not um, you know I don't have to think about it and be like, oh, okay, I gotta write a song. Let's think of, you know. It's like, no, you just, I mean, you might think about what kind of song you wanna write, but you're not really, it's not that much thought put into it. It's more just happens, but maybe it's uh, after doing it for a while, you, maybe you, if once you learn how to channel your own brain into just thinking in music, it's a lot easier, you know. Because even when I was younger, it was a lot harder for me, I think, to write songs. Because I, I didn't even know 
what I wrote, if it could be a song or not. And now it's like I know, okay, this, you know, I know how to do it all. It just makes sense. It's just, I guess it's just experience or something like that. Uh, I don't know what my advice would be. Um, I mean, I know I could just relate to when I started. I didn't know, I didn't know and the difference between a bass or a guitar you know or a banjo for that extent I just knew that I like I originally wanted to play bass not because I knew what a bass sounded like because like Gene Simmons played a bass uh, Steve Harris played a bass you know and they were cool you know and I was like I want to play bass out you know and then I only switched to guitar because I couldn't find a bass teacher I didn't I didn't know a difference, so I just bought a guitar and I figured, okay, well, I'll learn an instrument that someone could teach me. Um, and it just happened to kind of go from there. Um, as far as giving someone advice, I mean, it's difficult because, you know, certain people are just have a talent to do something like, you know, getting into woodwork or anything you know you have to have a talent to do it and with an instrument you have to just have a talent to do it i mean the best thing i guess do is just try just say pick up you know guitar try to get some lessons kind of learn what you're, you're doing i would say you know as far as if you like decide to play a certain instrument probably the biggest problem in music today that it's best to probably try to avoid is to depend on all the YouTube tutorials on how to play everything because everybody is learning how to play everything the same exact way and that is terrible for music there's there's the there's no rules in creating music people might tell you there's rules you know, yeah, you can learn your scales and you could learn your chords and stuff like that. But in reality, there's no rules. If there's rules in metal, especially, or especially if it's death metal or grindcore or something, if you have rules for that, then you're doing it wrong. You know, it's just the bottom line. Um, so, like, to put it in perspective for myself, I, I learned from... Um, just a, a regular guitar teacher who he, he played in like a kind of a, a kind of a poserish type band. He, they would play like Scorpions and uh, Death Leopard songs, and he taught me a couple songs and the basics of guitar. Then I took lessons from a guy, Ed Furman, who was the guitar player for the band Hades, and um, he taught me a little bit about it. Then I then I, when I went to college, I took just I just took a guitar class in college. From a, um, it was supposed to be a classical, um, you learn how to you play classical and read sheet music, but it ended up being like this old jazz dude, and he just kind of taught me how to read sheet music, but then kind of, you know, showed me in a jazz way to do it. But I just learned like from those kind of sources, and I would maybe, I, I remember buying like a guitar book. For like Iron Maiden or something and um, Black Sabbath and I learned the songs that I could from there you know but when you learn the stuff on your own like you don't know you don't understand early on like the pickings and you know all these things that like I learned later on that were like important for most death metal bands but I didn't give a fuck about it in myself you know but it was a, it was just um, it's better it's better to go off the beaten path learning I guess I mean another another example of um, myself is that I didn't even care to know about the drums and the guitar um, locking into each other as far as like having you know, pick notes to each drum, to each bass drum or whatever, you know, like when you're doing double bass, you're supposed to go, do -do 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 -do, you know, which, I mean, I did it because it sounded right, but I didn't really know that it was like a thing. It was just like, okay, I'm playing this riff, he's playing the drums, I just picked the guitar this way and it makes sense or whatever. 
But I started learning in the late 90s with uh, touring with some other bands that there became like rules to like this stuff. And I was like, it just seems wrong, you know? Because I, besides being into metal, I grew up with a lot of punk and stuff. I grew up with the Dead Kennedys and uh, Black Flag and MDC, all these bands like that, like Agnostic Front. And they didn't give a fuck about like how many notes you're playing in the riff or whatever. You're just, you're just picking as fast as you can and going for it. I mean, that's how our uh, you know early stuff like Onward to Golgotha and Mortal Throne, we just fucking went for it. You know, it wasn't like oh shit. You know, like as long as we, it was kind of tight, we knew okay, we're starting on the one, we're starting on the one, and just whatever happens in between happens, and it sounds fucking good. And you know. If someone wants to tell me it's wrong, okay, fuck, tell me it's wrong. I don't give a fuck, you know, but the music is the music. And, you know, I I think the albums came out good without knowing what the hell I was doing. And other people seem to like it. So it's like, you know, as long as the people that like it, like it, and the people I like it, you know, and the people in the band enjoy it, that's all. It's important. So getting back to um, the original question, um try to follow your own path don't don't i i watch these some of these youtube things they're talented players and stuff like that you know and it's good it's it's good to know that stuff but i mean if you and like what sixty thousand other guitar players are watching the same guy do the same exact thing and you work on your technique that the same exact way you're going to be the same as maybe 30,000 of those 60,000 guitars, because other guitars probably can't do it, but there's some that will, which is nice, but at the same time, it's boring, unless you just want to be just like everybody else and just, you know, play everything in your perfect little box and um, whatever, and, I mean, you know, maybe that's good for you, you know, but for death metal, uh, it, it's, how, it's how the music sounds, not, um, you know, it, I guess, my mantra has been from day one it's not the riff itself it's not the notes in the riff it's the feeling you get when you hear the riff that's what's important for me the best moment is when i get the mix back from like dan swano hear it and i'm like ah oh, fuck it sounds nice it's like yes it came out right that's super awesome beans? yeah I had some oh. beans so you're in trouble yeah uh. some refried beans